Hi guys, and welcome back to Movies That Matter with the Viking. Now, Henry Cavill is on a press tour per se. Can't really do it now with COVID, but through podcasts and interviews and Zoom and stuff, he has been talking about his new Netflix film, Enola Holmes, which I've yet to see and I'll do a review about it. But he's playing Sherlock Holmes, which is pretty cool. He's played some iconic characters over the last few years. Like he's been in Tom Cruise, Mission Impossible. He has played Superman. Sherlock Holmes, you know, he's doing pretty well for himself and maybe maybe might be the next James Bond but Who knows? Who knows? But an interesting thing is they addressed the Schneider Cut, they addressed Justice League And he said that he had to lie back in 2017 on the press tour For Justice League. Now, why did he have to lie? Well, let's go back to Batman vs Superman. Batman v Superman. Spoiler alert, Superman died to the hand to the spear of uh, Doomsday, pretty cool, iconic uh, comic book movie moment. He died and then the funeral took place, but then at the very last shot we got to see the dirt rising, which told us Superman isn't fully dead, he'll come back. But the big questions after Batman vs Superman was, not that he, would he be in Justice League, because we all knew that he would be in Justice League, but the big question for us fans was, how would he come back? How would Superman be resurrected? How would he come back? From the dead. Now, an interesting thing about the marketing back in 2017 for Justice League, which I thought was absolutely atrocious, was the lack of marketing towards Superman. There was no Superman in the trailers. They referenced them. There was no Superman in the trailers. There was no posters with Henry Cavill's Superman. Like, people didn't know. Average audiences, we knew he was going to be in the film. We knew that Henry Cavill's Superman would come back in some capacity. But say average audiences who see the billboards, see the posters, see the trailers online, things like that, they wouldn't have had a clue. You know, they would have looked at Justice League and they would have seen the post. So there's Batman. Cyborg, they might know who Cyborg is. Jason Moore wasn't a hit yet with his Aquaman film. They knew who Wonder Woman was. So really there wasn't that big marketing push from Warner Brothers saying, look, come, this is the Justice League. They effed up big time for that film, in my opinion, for the marketing. And they told Henry Cavill on the press tour to lie that he was in the film. Henry Cavill, you're going on the press tour with Ben Affleck and Jason Moore and Gal Gadot and Wonder Woman, but you have to lie that you're in the film. I remember those press tours, I remember those interviews, I've watched every single one of them back in 2017 because I was excited for the film and Henry Cavill was isolated from the group, he used to have Ray Fisher, Jason Momoa, Ben Affleck all doing interviews together, Gal Gadot, Ezra Miller, then the, 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 that group doing interviews together and he just had Henry Cavill there at the side like, yeah, and, uh, loved being, I love being Superman and his moustache and like he's like, it, he even said in the, in, in the interview that it was awkward for him to do that and he told the, probably the PR people, look it's going to be awkward for me to do this but I'll do it. Why was he on the press tour if, if he had to lie? Like it's one thing having him there, you could have had him there with the rest of the cast and it wouldn't have been too bad. But then for him to lie that he's in the actual film when we all knew he was in the film and then I think it was a week or a few days after the film released and then when it, it performed badly domestically at the box office in terms of its first weekend, a hundred, I think it made 96 million, I think it made in its first weekend domestically which is poor for a huge film which is supposed to be on the scale of say a Marvel's Avengers. Then they started putting Superman in the posters. Then they started putting uh, Superman into the marketing because they knew that they effed up. And it brings me back to Birds of Prey. Birds of Prey wasn't doing that well at the box office. And it was called Birds of Prey, Harley Quinn and him, whatever it was called. Then they switched it to the title after a week or so to Harley Quinn Birds of Prey because people were like, there's no interest in seeing this film, you know, so... Warner Brothers marketing has been absolutely atrocious at times. I think the Joker marketing was brilliant, the Aquaman marketing was brilliant, but Birds of Prey and Just League was very, very poor. Now HBO Max, which is greenlit, the Zack Snyder's Just League for 2021, I think the marketing from them has been very well. One thing that they have done that, that, that Warner Brothers did not do was interact with the fans. Warner Media's accounts, on HBO Max, on Twitter, on Facebook, they actually interact with the fans, even on Instagram. They reply to comments, they have fun uh, with, with GIFs and things like that, which is pretty cool. You know, they interact with the fan base, they get this kind of a connection with each other and it makes you kind of feel like a fan again, that this uh, HBO Max uh, Twitter page or Instagram page is replying to your comments or kind of a... Uh, it's like they're one of us, you know, that kind of a way. In 2017, it lacked that big time. And Warner Brothers just seemed to be just no interest in this film whatsoever. And that's a pity. The marketing for the film, if the film wasn't good, 
the film is not good. But the, if the marketing had Superman from the start, I think it would have made a little bit more money. I really do. Because Superman is this huge character. And they would have looked at Batman versus Superman like, alright, Superman's dead. I guess he's not coming back. They killed off Superman already. It's just Batman. I don't really know if I want to go see this, you know? So, like, that was a big part of why he didn't make money either. If they marketed that film right, even though it's a bad film, you look at, like, some of the Transformer films, you look at some of the G.I. Joe films, but the marketing was very good for those films, and that's probably why it made so much money as it did, because they got that off to a T, and they marketed the film in a really good way. Justice League, if it did market the film the way it was that they should have, and even Zack Schneider has said they don't know why they didn't have Superman in the marketing, then it probably would have made more money. But this also brings me to another point. Henry Cavill was told to lie about him being in the film. What else was Henry Cavill told to lie about? The Schneider Cut? His future appearances as as, as Superman in the DC Universe? Him appearing in, in, in him acknowledging a Schneider Cut? Remember back in November, he was doing the Witcher press tour for Netflix, and he was asked a lot of questions, like he is now for Enola Holmes, about Superman, the future of Superman, is there a Schneider Cut? And I remember there was a lot of controversy at the time, and he said, I, I don't know if there is a Schneider Cut, but I want to look at the future for Superman. Maybe he was told to say those things. Maybe by his agent, uh, Garcia, who's also The Rock's agent, maybe by, by Warner Brothers. Look, if you're asked any questions, do not say anything. Do not acknowledge the Schneider Cut. Do not entertain the Schneider Cut. Just talk about Superman, your love for the character, and the future of the character. Because remember, he was trying to get a new deal. He didn't show up for the Shazam cameo. He was trying to get a new contract as Superman for future installments, whether it be standalone Man of Steel films, or him appearing in cameos, or future Justice League films. And he was trying to play ball with Warner Brothers. And I remember talking talking about this on Twitter, I was a big defender of what his comments on the Schneider Code. I was like, look, he is under no obligation to say there is a Schneider Code. He's under no obligation to say that he wants to see a Schneider Code. Remember, his last appearance of Superman was in Justice League, which was absolutely terrible. They messed with his face, they messed with his character, and it wasn't a good outing for him to come off, but come off saying, look, I need a Man of Steel 2, 3 year sequel. I need to be in these movies. I need to be Superman again really quickly. He didn't have that star, that star power yet to do that because they butchered their, his character, because Justice League underperformed and didn't do what they were expecting it to do. So he didn't have the power to turn around and say, I need a money, I need a pay rise and stuff like this. He had to play ball. And if he had come out at the time and said, yep, there's a Schneider Cut. I want to see it. My character's done right in the Schneider Cut. Then he more than likely would not get a new contract with WB for future Superman installments. He had to play ball. He could not go against the studio because look, Aquaman had come out at that stage, cracked a billion. Jason Momoa wasn't going to be recast. A future film, second film of that is coming. Gagadol's Woman Woman, Wonder Woman. Everyone loves her. A sequel of that, 84, is coming. Ben Affleck had stepped away. He had no interest in the DC universe anymore. Ezra Miller was still up in the up in the up in the air, but his Flash solo movie was coming. And Ray Fisher had nothing to lose, even though he was acknowledging the Shadow He had nothing to lose because of all the behind scenes stuff, he's probably pissed off at that. And also there was no plans for his character to come back. So, and his character was butchered in the, in the Justice League 17. So he wanted to speak up and get that film released. Henry Cavill didn't have any foot to stand on. He really didn't because he couldn't play ball. He had to play ball. He couldn't go against Warner Brothers because that would affect his future as Superman. Now we fast forward. The Schneider Cut has been announced. He talks about the Schneider Cut. He's looking forward to the Schneider Cut. And then we, now he's being asked about his contract. Is he going to play Superman again in future films? And he's keeping that on the down low as well because maybe he has a contract signed. Maybe he doesn't, but he doesn't want to create any bad negative press for Warner Brothers. He is, look, probably a yes man for them. He talks in a very political way, Henry Cavill. He never gives too much away. He never really confirms anything. He just talks positively. And he even talks positively about the 2017 Justice League version. Because at the end of the day, guys, there is children that went to go see that film. And they loved that film. They loved Superman. They loved his character in Justice League. They got a buzz out of it. They're kids. They like these kind of movies. You can't fault them. And if they enjoyed it, they enjoyed it. And Henry Cavill, for me, appreciates that. He appreciates that people don't like Man of Steel, Batman vs Superman, and that's the right, that's their opinion. He calls those kind of niche films, but he never goes out of his way to badmouth the 2017 version. 
Maybe one reason is because he doesn't want to go toe to toe with Warner Bros. and be like a rebel and it affect his future projects. And maybe another reason is because he realizes that he is Superman. He has an image to uphold of doing the right thing, of being positive, of, of upholding an image, of talking uh, positively about the character. And also there might be kids and people out there who did enjoy the incarnation of Superman. There's people who like Man of Steel, Batman for Superman, that didn't like Justice League. There's people that didn't like Man of Steel, didn't like Batman for Superman, but loved Justice League probably kids so he respects those interests those choices those loves and those different uh, um, perspectives of opinion on the character and the incarnation he has played so he never bad that bad mouth any of the films but Henry Cavill lying about Superman in 2017 because he was told to it makes me think maybe he was told to lie about the Schneider cut maybe he was told to lie about the additional photography which he had an interview with Collider and said he wasn't coming back for any additional photography at the time though it wasn't confirmed that additional photography was happening in October so maybe that's why he didn't want to say anything he didn't want to, he didn't want to be the one to break it but guys it just brings me to a point that Henry Cavill you can't really believe anything he says he's a good guy I like him I like him as an actor I like him as a person in interviews I like him on Instagram he's a he, he seems like a pretty good guy, but he plays the ball that he needs to play, whether it's with Netflix, whether it's with Warner Brothers, where his agent tells him or not. And look, he's going to listen to his agent. His agent is the agent of The Rock, and he is a mega star. His agent has got him so many good roles in the past and has got him to where he is now. So he's going to listen to these people. But it's just, just I just want you to, to kind of come to the realization that we can't believe everything that these actors, directors say. You know, Ray Fisher praised Josh Whedon before at Comic-Con and then he retracted that statement. We have Je we have Ben Affleck who praised Jeff Johns and he has a lot of respect for him. Sometimes you just have to say things in the public eye because that's the easy thing to do. So Henry Cavill lied in 2017 about being in uh, Just Sleep because he was told to. It made no sense but he was told to and that's what he did. Back in November when he was asked about the Schneider Cut, he said he doesn't know if there's a Schneider Cut. Maybe he was told to lie about it even though he knew there was a Schneider Cut. And then when it was announced, he would talk openly about it. And that brings me to the next point. When additional photography is openly confirmed by Zack Schneider, by, by Warner Brothers, by HBO Max, whoever is going to confirm it, then he will talk openly about it. When he is announced to appear in Shazam or Black Adam or a future Superman solo film, then he will talk about it. that's my point he's never going to give too much away because let me know your thoughts on henry cavill lying and the poor marketing campaign from warner brothers back in 2017 absolutely bad i was even thinking to myself back in 2017 like just show superman just show us because we know he's going to come back but it just shows you how bad wb are, are creating this dc universe and should have just let zack schneider do his thing but thankfully hbo max is allowing that i think henry cavill will come back for a future superman i've said it before black adam is where he will shine them to we're gonna go at it bv again batman versus superman black adam v uh, superman dwayne rock johnson versus superman you have a huge marketing opportunity there and i think the rock has seen that seven bucks production is his production company and they're going to be producing the black adam film as well so it's very much a rock movie i think there's loads of room for henry cavill to return because let me know your thoughts and all this information from henry cavill and see let me know if i'm talking bs am i on the right line uh, do you think I have something um, interesting to say about this? Do you think I'm right? think I'm wrong? I want to hear you give me a discussion to talk about and we'll talk about it in a respectful manner because we're movie friends and that's what we love talking about. Until next time, guys. Henry Cavill's Superman is a liar.